So there are some opportunistic marketers who try to use the migrant crisis to fool you, to bluff you, to make you think that your government is bad and you know the best thing to do is to leave. In this video, I wanted to discuss this and um, kind of discuss how this is absolutely crap. It's very opportunistic to think and to uh, instigate people in that way. Now, if poor people, right, if poor migrants and the migrant crisis is not common to any particular country, the world has become more problematic than ever. There are real life issues, life threatening issues because of which these migrants are flocking to not just your country, to every single country that they can possibly find. And that is to save their life either from poverty or some real life threat. The situation is very different from the situation of uh, rich expats, right? So if the migrants, uh, if rich expats have the right and you feel, you know, the rich expats feel that they can go to poorer countries to save on taxes, to optimize their taxes for various financial and economic gains and opportunities, then these poor migrants, you know, have all the rights to flee to richer countries or developed countries to seek shelter and protection in place. Yes, who is going to spend on some of their medical expenses? It has to come through the state funds. That is where some of the money gets invested and someone somewhere has to take care of it. So it has to be the state budget or the country's budget. But when you are looking to seek shelter in foreign countries, in poorer countries, try to make use of their land, their opportunities, their, let's say, their permanent residency or their citizenship or their passport to optimize your taxes, it has to work vice versa, right? It's always, it works both ways. So if you have the rights, they have the rights. Opportunistic marketers using the migrant crisis to instigate people and teach the wrong things is very wrong in my opinion. Now, should you leave? Absolutely not, right? So taxes is not the start and the end of the world, right? It's a very minor component. Of course, you want to optimize your taxes. Of course, you feel cheated sometimes when you are taxed very highly. All of that is fine. Apart from the taxation, the protection uh, and the coverage, right? You, go, you want to get protected from your home country in a lot of cases. So you want the protection in place. So you don't necessarily have to leave unless it's very, very dangerous in your home country. Let's say they're coming for you. You feel you're right. They're going to get you. That situation qualifies for, you know, leaving permanently your home country. But otherwise, your country is a dream country in most cases, which other people are trying to target. So leaving that is absolute stupidity. Yes, absolutely. I, I do agree. Plan B protection, tax optimization is a definite yes. It's a very good thing to do, right? To keep your um, safety mechanism in place. And that is where you have multiple opportunities outside while you continue to hang on to your main options. Now, I do understand some countries, the citizenship is horrible. You don't want to hang on to it. You want to leave it. Very understandable in those cases. Yes, I would say leave. Uh, obviously, makes sense to leave, right? But when your citizenship is high quality, it's a great quality jurisdiction. One or two things doesn't break the deal. There is workaround, right? That is where I'm saying you need protection in place. You want to do it legally. You want to do it smartly. So what are the options, right? There are tons of options that I keep discussing on my channel. I obviously am biased. I like high quality, genuine options. And when I say genuine, real, when I use these two terms, it's usually um, what I mean is genuine ties that you can prove, right? If someone asks you, if you ask yourself, how did you get this passport or how did you get this citizenship? The two answers that you can give, one is you can outright say, I just paid for it and got it. So that's how you got your citizenship versus you have some ties to the country. Let's say you bought a property, you resided there for, even if it is for a few days, even if it is for a few days, a year, I would say, right? Maybe in a year or two, you have some logical connection. You've gone through the process and that's how you gain a natural, rich, real citizenship. Some of the uh, examples of real citizenships are, let's say, Turkey, South Africa, Mauritius, Mexico, 
uh, a host of those Latin countries, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, all these countries are genuine, legit, real countries where you can work yourself towards their citizenship. Some of the some of my top picks or hot favorites in 2023 for residency are South Africa, Mauritius, Mexico. Those are the top three uh, choices. And then, of course, you have several other hidden gems as well, which are very good. So if you're looking for well-known countries, then these are the, the options that are in front of you. But if you're looking for some other exotic options, then there are tons of options available still, which can be genuinely obtained uh, through natural means. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you, the moment there is any news, uh, any breaking update regarding anything to do with the RCBI domain, you're the first one to get notified. So make sure you turn on the bell notification as well. And if you want to get started with any of these residencies or any of the residencies of your choice, or you want to discuss what is the best option for you, then click that link in the description, book a call with us. We can discuss what works best in your circumstances, the certain residencies which might work faster in your case, right? versus others so we can have that discussion and also get you started with the right option of your choice well catch you in the next one